Welcome to the Evergreen Thumb. I'm your host, Erin Landon, a Washington State University Extension Master Gardener since 2015 and a certified permaculture designer and modern homesteader. I'm here to share up-to-date research-based horticulture and environmental stewardship knowledge to help you grow and manage your garden and to share what the WSU Extension Master Gardener program is all about. WSU Extension Master Gardener volunteers are university-trained community educators who have been cultivating plants, people, and communities since 1973. Are you ready to grow? Let's dig into today's episode. Welcome to the Evergreen Thumb, episode number four. My guest today is Alice Allison, and Alice is a Benton Franklin County Master Gardener, and she's here today to talk to us about their Juvenile Justice Center project. Before we get started with Alice, I wanted to take a moment to go through our October gardening calendar. For maintenance, make sure you winterize bird baths and garden art by removing water to avoid chips and cracks from freezing. It's time to drain or blow out your irrigation system and insulate valve mechanisms to prevent them from freezing. Cover rhubarb beds and asparagus with a mulch of manure and or compost to protect them from freezing and fertilize for spring. October is a great time to clean and sharpen tools and prepare them for winter storage. It's a good time also to prune out the dead fruiting canes in raspberries And after the first light frost, dig up and divide or store summer bulbs such as dahlias, gladiolas, and lilies. Lilies should not be stored. Gladiolas can be dug up and stored or replanted. Though dahlias, if you're in a wetter winter area, can rot, so it is recommended to store them over the winter. For planting and propagation, it's a great time to dig and divide rhubarb, which should be done about every four years. It's time to plant garlic for next summer's harvest. It's a really good time to plant trees and shrubs, uh, divide ground covers. For pest monitoring and management, it's a good time to remove and dispose of windfall apples that might be harboring apple maggot or codling moth larvae. Make sure to rake up and destroy diseased leaves. It's important that if you compost them, that has to be very hot compost in order to kill any pathogens. Monitor landscape plants for problems, but don't treat unless you have identified a problem. And if you do identify a problem and aren't sure what to do about it, contact your local WSU Extension office to get in touch with your local master gardener volunteers to help identify the issue and how to treat it. For houseplants and indoor gardening, it's time to move fuchsias where they won't freeze, but wait until spring to cut them back. And Check other house plants or plants that need to be overwintered indoors for insects before bringing them indoors so you're not bringing the insects in as well. Now we'll switch gears to Alice Allison. Alice, welcome to the show. Thank you. So to start off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your gardening experience, how you came to be a master gardener? Well, I've always been involved in gardening. I was in 4-H and Uh, Even when I hardly had any land, I would have a garden. And so when I retired, uh, I decided it was time to be a master gardener. And I've been the education chair since the second year I was there. And I I joined in 2010. So I've been doing a lot of things. Okay. So what inspired master gardeners in Benton Franklin County to work with incarcerated youth? Well... We had a master gardener who was actually employed at the Juvenile Justice Center. And so she was looking for projects that the kids could do that would inspire them. So they started with an outdoor grow area. And then they discovered that, oh, some kids weren't allowed to go outside. So they took an old housing area that they weren't using and converted it into an indoor grow area. And I didn't get involved until that was all established. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about the facilities, that grow room and the sorry, the garden beds and how they how you use them with the kids? Well, in the indoor area, the we first started with 
just some bench work and some grow lights around it. But we soon uh, outgrew that. So we just took and got some LED lights that we put over the cement area that they had used as as beds. So um, we had grow lights in two of those areas. We've used up all the electricity that's in there. So we can't expand anymore. But what we had to do this year was the heat wasn't working. So we put them out in the hallway. So we just go everywhere. And then outdoors, uh, they had built some beds, but they didn't work very well. The Bumerita grass won. So they took those down and we have 10 beds that the master gardeners helped build. And so then the work crew has mostly been keeping those alive because there are very few kids that can go outside right now. And I've been working with the the indoor kids because what we do is we have a program where we give five gallon pots to Head Start families and, and a plant. So the juvenile justice kids have been growing peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes that fit in containers. And when we have outdoors, we have a what was an exercise area that was covered with plastic, and it's a nice hoop house. It has a fan, and it has drip irrigation, and so it's a wonderful place to harden off all those plants that they've been growing. Do you want to learn more about gardening, meet new people, and make a difference in your community? The WSU Extension Master Gardener Program may be just right for you. You will gain science-based knowledge to tackle the yard and garden problems that matter to you, your friends and neighbors, and to your community. With WSU Extension's Master Gardener Training, you'll learn about soil health, plant identification, pest management, sustainable gardening practice, and so much more. Unlock the secrets of successful gardening and make a positive impact in your community. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to become a certified Washington State University Master Gardener volunteer. Visit mastergardener.wsu.edu forward slash join hyphen us today to learn more about the program and how to apply. All right. So what do the kids in the Justice Center and the Master Gardeners gain from the experience of working together? Well, We really enjoy, I mean, they're youths and we like working with them and we like seeing that they really respond to us. There have been kids who we know that have had some real problems, but when they're in that grow room, oh, you are our best gardener. And so uh, they just, they like that we accept them as gardeners and we have them enrolled in a group 4-H program, so we go over 4-H values and remind them that, hey, they're in 4-H, and that's a cool thing. And we just, we love seeing how they they respond. It's funny. It's A lot of times, it's hard to get anybody to say, yeah, I want to try that program. But once they're in, boy, they <laughs> we fight for chances to, to take turns being with the kids. Great. So can you share a story about how a particular youth was impacted by the project? Well, our our best story is when we ran into some kids that had left the facility and in the grocery store, and they were all over us to tell us about how they were growing things at their house. Oh, that's great. So what kind of partnerships or collaborations have been established to support the project? We don't have a lot, but the community does support our fundraising efforts, which uh, we mostly do through the Seed Money Project. And we have cooperation with Head Start to distribute them. And just kind of a lot of, you know, we try to publicize it here and there, but basically we, we haven't needed a ton of other support than just what we can get with our Master Gardener Foundation. Do you have suggestions for other organizations or other Master Gardener programs that would be interested in implementing a a similar program? Well, the the main thing is, is that each of the places where people are incarcerated have very different rules. 
So, you know, you, you need to find out what the interest is. I know that the people in charge of our juvenile justice have tried to publicize this around the state because they think it's a really uh, helpful program. Uh, but it's never going to look the same in a different county because they all have different rules about how they deal with and facilities. I mean, I know Yakima has an outdoor grow area that's working for them, uh, but we struggle because we can't get any kids outside. I had seen a photo of ribbons uh, that some of the kids had won. Was that at your county fair? Yes, because we have them in group 4-H, then they uh, are able to make some entries for the fair. So we, we have them all sitting there waiting for the fair on the 21st. We'll take them over there. But uh, they make mostly dish gardens of various types. Uh, so they, you know, we bring in different plants and then they make selections and get them going. So, so and then you facilitate getting it to the fair for on their behalf. Yes. Yes. Great. So one thing we haven't mentioned um, is that the Benton Franklin County Master Gardener Program has won an award for this program. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, at the International Master Gardener Convention in Kansas this last summer, uh, we won the search for excellence in the youth category. That's why we made a video and uh, it was really fun. There were several of us that were able to attend to accept the award. That's great. And we will have a link to that video in the show notes. So is there anything else you'd like to share about your Juvenile Justice Center project? Just that it always amazes me that it's, so interesting to us. We, we never know from time to time. Sometimes, oh, the, the teacher will email us and say, oh, there's going to be, um, you know, eight kids there. Then we get there and there's four. So, you know, it's always a surprise. Where can listeners find the Benton Franklin County Master Gardener Program online? Do you have a website? Yes, we do. It's a little tricky because there's one that's linked to the um, foundation and another one that's linked to the extension. But when you do go to the state one and you scroll down to click on the county, that link is working. Okay. Well, we will add that link to the show notes as well so they can find you. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Just that... You know, we're, we're glad that, that we can publicize that, you know, juvenile justice kids are kids before they're criminals. Okay. So as I mentioned, the links, it will be in the show notes. Um, so you can connect with the WSU Extension Benton Franklin County Master Gardener Program and see the video they submitted in order to um, compete for the award that they were received at the International Master Gardener Program. Thank you, Alice, for joining us today and sharing the WSU Extension Benton Franklin County Master Gardener Program and their Juvenile Justice Center project. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Evergreen Thumb, brought to you by the WSU Extension Master Gardener Program volunteers and sponsored by the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. We hope that today's discussion has inspired and equipped you with valuable insights to nurture your garden. The Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State is a nonprofit organization whose primary purpose is to provide unifying support and advocacy for WSU Extension Master Gardener programs throughout Washington State. To support the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State, visit www.mastergardenerfoundation.org forward slash donate. Whether you're an experienced master gardener or just starting out, the WSU Extension Master Gardener Program is here to support you every step of the way. WSU Extension Master Gardeners empower and sustain diverse communities with relevant, unbiased, research-based horticulture education. 
reach out to your local WSU Extension office to connect with master gardeners and tap into a wealth of resources that can help you achieve gardening success. To learn more about the program or how to become a master gardener, visit mastergardener.wsu.edu forward slash get hyphen involved. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to stay connected with us, be sure to subscribe to future episodes filled with expert tips, fascinating stories, and practical advice. Don't forget to leave a review and share it with fellow gardeners to spread the joy of gardening. Questions or comments to be addressed in future episodes can be sent to hello at theevergreenthumb.org. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by guests of this podcast are their own and do not imply endorsement by Washington State University or the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. Mm-hmm.